Hello, Pokey here. I decided to go with Resheth's Chain Gang list. I had uh, Titans, which are, are required for his list. Then the Beast Handlers, which are always handy for Scorn. Then I added two units of Gatorman Posse, because the Gatorman just do so much for the Scorn list with the Taskmasters. Then I also had, because of the tier bonus, three Agonizers. Hey everybody, this is Gaston. I'm here today with one of my favorite Warcasters, the High Reclaimer. This list features two units of Bastions in order to work a lot of attrition, and then a maximum unit of Idrians with their UA. And again, they can do a lot of infantry clearing, and then if you decide to prey your opponent's Warcaster, you can have a really, really good assassination run with them as well, especially with regard to the feet. As deployment goes, I uh, wanted to put Resheth somewhat central because uh, it made more sense to have somebody that slow in the middle so that way I knew which way I could go in the battlefield and with his large control area it allowed me to uh, do more with him because uh, of his speed. Then I put the beast handlers, uh, mixed them in between the beasts so that way they could uh, not be out of formation. Then the Swamp Gobbers, they went next to, uh, also in the front line near the caster. The Agonizers went behind each of the uh, Titans and the Gators went on flanks, flanking ends of the list of the uh, deployment with the Taskmasters nearby. So we started deployment with High Reclaimer dead center of the army. That way, when he creates his smoke clouds moving forward, we're able to cover as many models as possible. Tristan and his Redeemer are going to go behind that wall where they can form a nice safe fire base and will not be as threatened by a lot of the elements of his army. We're going to deploy the Bastions on either side of the High Reclaimer, very symmetrical. Then we're going to have the Choir in their position in order to scoot forward, uh, chant battle, especially on turn one since you're going to be putting up these clouds, you're not so worried. Sometimes what we'd like to do is put the choir in such a way that the higher claimer can charge them, get better table position. This ended up not being an issue in this particular game, just because of how fast his army is. But here you can see you're arranging it so you have the higher fin up front so he can move around as well. They're just sneaking in some support solos in the back. Finally, we just use our advanced deployment, the Adrian Skirmishers. Again, we have the guide. He's the one who gives him prey tucked up behind the wall for a little bit extra safety. As most turn ones go, this was going to be pretty straightforward. It was just basically going to be getting the army up the field as fast as possible. So I activate Resheth first. He then cast Rush three times, once for each of the Titans. He will then drop two, uh, one in each of the Agonizers, and then he will advance his four. Uh, normally you'd see the, the caster... Uh, Normally you'd see the caster try to charge something afterwards to get the extra speed, but without any melee weapons, all he can do is advance. So now I activate the bronze back, and he's going to row for three and run. Uh, nice 10 inch advance. The gladiator is going to activate next. He's also going to row for two and then run. And then the sentry is going to run just beyond the wall for an additional point. The gobbers are going to activate. They're going to move forward. They're going to put their little cloud down because I need to protect the uh, the caster here. He doesn't protect himself too well, especially when he doesn't have any fury. I wasn't exactly sure if uh, he could reach out and touch me, so I just wanted to be on the safe side. Now it's a uh, trying to make sure I do the activations in the right order. Thanks to the tier bonus, uh, all not all. 
but uh, minion units with Taskmasters can get plus two speed. So for this one, I ran the Gators, and they did Dirge of Mist, and then ran. The Taskmaster advanced and did Tempered Flesh, which gives them tough. And because she's got a nine inch control area, it made it really nice because now they also have no sleeping on the job if I have to make a tough check that I make. Um, I then take the Agonizers, I have them run. Well, the first two ran up behind, one behind the wall, one behind the Gladiator, hoping to protect them. Now the other Gatorman Posse, it runs and does Dirge of Mist. It has prey on it, so I wanna make sure I give the Idrians a wide berth. I don't want the Idrians to have any more bonuses than they have to have. And now I run the final agonizer up. So very wisely, he took the unit of Gatorman that was prayed and he ran them away from the Idrians. But I think we've established throughout all of our games and about playing War Machine, everybody hates the Gatorman posse and they really need to go away. So what we're doing is we're starting off here, we're taking the Idrians, they're just moving forward and they're just going to start CRAing right into the front posse guys. And the odds of them killing them are actually not very high, but the hope is, is that we're going to weaken them up enough that that Redeemer can come in with his very long range gun and just pop a couple guys off, finish them off, and whittle them down very early in the game. So the Adrians are going to go ahead, they're going to use Go to Ground now because you might as well. They're probably not going to get a chance to use it anywhere other in the game. And here you see they're just doing, you know, two, three man CRAs and knocking some damage on the Gatorman Posse. Here we have the Hierophant moving forward first, so he can put Harmonious Exaltation on Higher Claimer. And normally following this, the Choir would go, and the Choir would just run on turn one, give him the board position he needs. In this case, he didn't need it, so he didn't. We went ahead and saved the Choir Boy. Reckoner moves up, he pops a shot at a Gator, but he misses. So next up we have the Redeemer. He moves up, uses his gun, boost to hit, just take some straight damage rolls on him. And he fails his tough check, and we have one Gator down. Another buy, another shot, boost to hit. He connects, pass that tough check. Now we just have some Bastions running up. They're going to form the meat behind the Idrian wall. Carvalho is going to give the Idrians plus one defense, give them a little bit more survivability. Vessel's going to come up now, ancillary attack of the Reckoner. He will finally connect and put that stupid Gator down. And just a lot more running now, a lot more positioning. I'm going to tuck everybody in behind that cloud wall so they can't be hit by charges. They're nice and safe, and it really limits the distance that he can retaliate for you. The other thing that we're making is a little Bastion pocket, and this is because I'm very worried about the spell assassinations and arcing through the uh, different models that Rashef is capable of. A little bit of a goof here that um, eventually caught and fixed. The cloud on the end is actually not completely within 10 inches of him, so we go ahead and we scoot it back. The Adrian on the end will end up being inside the cloud. Okay. After the uh, first initial turn, and I ended up losing the Gators, the two lead Gators, it really kind of uh, hurt me a little bit. So now I'm pulling back all my Fury, uh, refilling and uh, checking my control area, because this is going to be a good turn uh, to, uh, to see if I can lock him down where he's at and hopefully not l allow him to advance too much on me. Um, Having those, those lead gators drop like that was tough, uh, but it does happen. Uh, so now it's a matter of uh, how to advance and tie him up without losing too much this turn. 
or on the next turn. So I start with the bronze back. He advances. I don't want to get him too far up. And the gladiator advances, and he does two to put rush on the sentry. Could have probably used my caster for it, but I was I think I was uh, I was hoping to do more with my caster, and the beast was going to need fo uh, fury anyways. So then I activate the sentry, and he runs. Because uh, with reach, he uh, where I was able to place him, he was able to uh, lock down quite a bit of the Idrian line. Uh, it'd be tough for him to hit them, but he can at least ways get far enough up to where it would be a potential for him to hit them and potentially kill them. Uh, the gobbers advance. They do their little ring of smoke because everybody needs to protect the caster. Uh, protecting the caster is a, is a good thing. And now it's uh, on to seeing what other things I can do to help prevent any further damage. So now I go ahead and activate the Agonizer. He does Spiritual Affliction and then runs. Uh, spiritual Affliction says uh, Warjacks cannot be allocated focus and they lose their Arc Node ability. That zone is measured from 4 inches plus 1 inch for every Fury Point that is on the Agonizer. So currently I'm sitting at 7 inches off of that one Agonizer. Now the Taskmaster advances and she gives the Gatorman unit tempered flesh, which will allow them to have tough. Um, I, as you can tell, I just now placed the final, the, the finally put the point of fury on the sentry for running. Should have probably put it there earlier, but sometimes you forget those things when you're in the midst of trying to figure out how not to lose. Uh, the one agonizer advances behind the pillar, trying to protect itself. Trying to figure out the fury count I'm going to need on my caster. So the beast handlers advance to for conditioning to add fury instead of removing it this time to my beasts. Checking my control error again because uh, right now I'm thinking this might be a good time to pop feet, uh, which is allows me to put uh, minus the strength an arm on my opponent while I'm in my control area. So I activate and I do Carnivore, arcing it through the Agonizer onto the Brown Gator Posse. Checking the kill box. Uh, when, I act, when I do the once per turn ability of arcing, the, mo the Warrior model does take D3 points of damage. Um, <clears throat> I then add, a, add Fury to the one Agonizer that's end up in the lead because he needs to make sure that he has as big a zone as possible and I then pop my feet. Um, hoping that with the sentry in the line and all those weapon master bastions that it'll help protect him. Then that agonizer will activate. He runs. I, I uh, run him up behind the sentry hopefully far enough back to where he can't, he can't get targeted by uh, any of the rest of his army because the agonizers are going to really be helpful for making sure that uh, I keep his jacks under, you know, a little bit under control. Now the gators activate, they take the, they do dirge of mist, and then they do the charge, run charge order. Uh, I can only see one Idrian, so that one charges. And then The rest of them run, well, the other two run, locking them down. I'm able to swing and kill off the one Idrian that I can. Then the Taskmaster advances and puts uh, Timbered Flesh, so once again they will have tough, and that is my turn. So we have problems here. He went ahead and he jammed me, and he jammed me hard. He took that sentry, he ran it straight on up the middle, then he popped his feet. Normally in Protector, we don't mind Reshef's feet so much because it only affects living models and we like to run a lot of Warjacks. Well, in this particular case, a lot of my army is living models, and so it's going to be a big impact on me. Additionally, he's got the little Agonizers, and they are just going to say no more allocation, and that's probably going to be it for the rest of the game. I am going to try to look out for them and see if I can't pop them off, 
and use sack lamb in order to allocate after the fact. But it's very hit and miss on whether or not you can do that, especially with the Gatorman posse right there. So the choir moving up, they're chanting battle. We have a Redeemer putting his aim shot in there and dinging up a Gatorman. Again, without focus, he kind of loses something. So Tristan, since he can't allocate focus, is going to do something that nobody ever, ever thought he would do, which is start casting Immolation and just slapping some Gators around. So he boosts, he manages to hit, but boosted damage roll bounces off the Gator's armor, unfortunately. But mark my words, Tristan is now an Immolation spam bot until it can allocate focus. So here we're just uh, giving the Idrians the Assault and Battery order. We're checking to see who's engaged, who's not engaged. They're doing a couple CRAs. They're trying to uh, bang up the Gator in the back and actually managed to kill him with some incredible dice rolls. And then they just charge in, quote unquote. Most of them don't actually get the three inches. Also try to put a shot into the agonizer that's disrupting all the warjacks, and that's going to be a no-go, unfortunately. So one of them goes ahead, runs up just to engage the bronze back. Um, you don't like the guy getting countercharge on you, especially when you can't allocate focus. Then they're just scooting up. They're going to um, bear hug the sentry because they can't really hurt him, but we're going to throw some Bastions at him in a second. Because if there's one thing that you'll ever learn in this game, all problems can be solved by throwing Bastions at them repeatedly. It's a pro tip. So they are actually able to knock off yet another Gatorman. Unfortunately, they're not able to kill the Agonizer. I believe it's a bad damage roll there. So the Bastions are coming up. They're, um, I believe they got Pathfinder off of Carvolo and are now charging. Some problems here. The Bastion went to charge the Agonizer and turns out that they didn't have line of sight. So instead, they just charged the Gator. And some amazing damage rolls later. He is now dead. And we have taken care entirely of one of the Gatorman posses. So there's a little bit of pondering going here on whether or not to actually charge the Bastions into the sentry. Because the odds are... I not really going to hurt it all that much, even being a weapon master. The thing is base armor 21, and with his feet going on, I'm down to a POW 10. So we're rolling dice minus 11, even with all the extra dice. And then to top that off, you also have the threat of the gators on the other flank. So eventually we went ahead and charged in there. And for two reasons. One, we can use the clouds to kind of put a kibosh on the gators getting to the bastions next turn. But also the sentry's only mat 5. And with the Reckoner there and with the Clouds there, we're actually using effectively Defense 15 Bastions, which are some seriously dodgy Bastions. And so the odds are just pretty good that they're going to be okay. And hopefully within the next turn or two, I can kill off some Agonizers, I can allocate some more focus to the Reckoner, I can start pounding on the thing with a uh, POW 19. And so he's just going to walk on in, he's going to smack it. I think... This turn we only did like a third of its life. Then the Vassal is going to come forward. He's just going to give it enliven because we do have that very threatening looking bronze back there. And I'd really rather him not train wreck into my Reckoner. So sadly I don't get my Ancillary attack, my extra pound 19. But the flip side is I don't want to risk my Heavy Jack either. Uh, here I make a Boo Boo. 
uh, Warren Winter, Midwinter moves up, he was going to say no spells until I remember that Higher Claimer hadn't gone yet. So instead he pops an Arc Lightning off at the Gladiator in an attempt to kill some pain givers with the bounces, and unfortunately he misses. So now the Higher Claimer scoots over, make, measures the control area, and then drops a Cloud Wall. And he makes sure to catch the sentry in the Cloud Wall, and it's all boxed in, you know, it's being bear hugged by these Idrians. So he's going ahead and he's uh, debuffing it. Okay, having the one unit of gators fall was bad, but at least ways they were able to hold off the Idrians and the Bastions on that flank. Uh, him not being able to kill off the Agonizer was really helpful. And now it's a matter of trying to figure out how best to keep him away from me and hopefully uh, try to go for control points because I do not have ranged. Uh, enough ranged attacks in this army to to uh, to do much uh, from a ranged assassination. So this is pretty much going to boil down to me attempting to go for the control points. So from here on out, I think that's that's the the right plan, and that is the the course of action I'm going to go with. So I take the taskmaster, I do pain driver on the gators which gives them plus two to dice uh, to damage rolls effectively making them a pow 15 or a pns 15 they then do dirge of mist and they then charge the pillar or the objective uh, the one that's able to get in the clouds he is uh, the bokur he is able to uh, do his non-reach attack on the pillar and then a reach attack on the bastion because I really wanted that needed that bastion to start taking some damage then the remainder of the gators started swinging on the pillar and were able to take out the pillar good dice rolls on the first initial swing which was good um, really helped out right there would have been nice if I could have got another gator in there uh, but unfortunately couldn't so now the agonizer goes does spiritual affliction and runs because uh, now if the pillar's gone I can now start collecting control points over on that flag and none of his infantry are within four inches to contest the flag so at the end of this turn I should have two control points one for the objective and then one for the flag I then run the gray agonizer forward, mostly so I can use it as an arc node again. I then take the gladiator. He advances forward to swing on that pesky Idrian. I boost it to hit because I need to hit him because I need to free up the bronze back so the bronze back isn't stuck back behind the lines uh, on this. So he effect he can he then ends up killing him. Now it's a uh, trying to figure out the rest of what's going to happen. <clears throat> and it's a, it's a tough call. He has a lot of weapon masters, and there's a lot of pain on his side of the table. Uh, the clouds are really affecting my my ability to do much in the way of uh, getting up the table to actually get any kind of an alpha strike off but I can you know got to do what I can do uh, a lot of slamming a lot of trampling um, and pretty much that's the the bulk of what I end up having to do so now uh, I take the sentry and I enrage him I enrage the bronze back because who doesn't like a free slam or trample <coughs> or charge for that matter I then activate Resheth, he advances forward. I then do Breath of Corruption, boosting, targeting 
the one Idrian. I was hoping to actually get uh, the pesky solo in, in under the AOE. I was hoping he was close, but I wasn't sure. I was able to hit the Idrian I was aiming for. The, under the AOE, we weren't quite sure as to who was exactly under, so we had to use another little widget, blast widget to see. And we were able to, uh, we weren't able to shirt tell for sure because models were moved, so we diced it off. And unfortunately, he was out. So, but the others were in, so I was able to hit them. And of course, the agonizer takes points because arcing does cause damage to the model. But uh, being able to take out infantry was was is also always a good thing. Always a good thing to take out infantry. Now the taskmaster that doesn't have any minions to, to master, I uh, choose to have her charge the one Idrian. She then uh, hits because you know I was able to actually hit her and roll well enough to kill the one Idrian. But because of her reach, I was also locking down the other two Idrians from advancing, which was really helpful for, for me. <clears throat> now it's the, uh, it's the Agonizer. He's going to advance forward, staying out of that one guy's reach, but getting trying to get close enough to lock down Tristan's Warjack under the Spiritual Affliction. He is then... Uh, now I'm going to... I think the only thing left in this turn is the bronze back, which this was kind of going to be an iffy an iffy possibility anyways because of the clouds, but uh, something needed to happen. But uh, first of all, I activate the sentry. Sentry starts swinging. I almost forgot about the sentry because all I have is a little token up there for him. But I start swinging, trying to do as much damage as possible. Uh, to all the different, you know, anything I could swing on. I think I ended up swinging on the Reckoner, and then I ended up swinging on uh, anything that was in half-inch melee. And then for my final portion, I did uh, tr uh, Locker, which will lock the Reckoner in place and not allow it to move away until the sentry is, is uh, destroyed. And luckily for me, with everything else in the way, he wasn't able to get him out of the way. I activate the Bronze back. I do train wreck, one for train wreck, and then I s trample forward by an attack on the bastion. I'm able to hit it and kill it. Now push it back, and I'm able to advance. So then I buy another attack on. Uh, Oh, what's his name? That guy right there. I'm able to kill him because the ability to say no magic hurts. So, there's some good news here and there's some bad news here. The good news is that the plan with the sentry worked very well. It certainly mitigated a lot of the hitting power and damage that it could do. The other good news is that with the cloud wall up, the Bronzeback had no line of sight and it cost him a lot to get in there. So by the time he finally got in there and started swinging on things, even with train wreck up, he was very limited with just the Five Fury on how far he could get in there. The bad news is, is that I'm looking very much to be losing my left flank to a unit of Gatorman Posse because all the Bastions, the Reckoner, are all still ganged up around the Sentry. It was a very annoying Sentry. I hate Titan Sentries so much. And probably the only thing I hate more than them is the Agonizers who are again saying that you're not going to ever allocate focus this game, ever. So what we're going to do is we're going to find out here if a bunch of Bastions can kill a Bronze Pack. And we're going to hope a lot that they can. Because I need to start unjamming things. So they're all charging in, we're being very careful, very legit here. Uh, checking to make sure he's not taking a free strike. And making sure the charge lanes are three inches, making sure they're all proper. So we get four bastions on the bronze back, and I believe one goes on an agonizer. And 
when it's all said and done, they leave their bronze back on incredibly low health. Uh, it's in the single digits. I don't quite remember what the number was. And then they kill the Agonizer because he deserves it. So one thing that was very important with this, and it'll pop up later on in the turn, is that Carvola went ahead and activated here and gave the Bastion's Pathfinder so that they could get over that wall. So here we're contemplating what to attack the bronze back with next. I would like to use the Reckoner on the Sentry because again of that POW 19. We're not having the Weapon Master charge bonus anymore, so we're not getting that additional die. But to be honest, the bronze back just has to die. It really does. So the car is going to move forward, they're going to champ battle. And we're going to activate the Reckoner. And he is going to miss. But then we are going to ancillary attack and finish off the bronze back. Thankfully. Very thankfully. So with that threat on that side of the table handled, we now turn to look on the other side of the table and what in the world am I going to do about these Gatorman Posse on the left flank? And I have a plan, and it is very risky because of Carvola's activation earlier. Those Gatorman Posse are still preyed by the Idrians. So, and then we have Tristan coming up and he's flinging some more emulations because that's what Tristan does officially now. So, what we have is that these Gatorman Posse are still preyed by the Idrians, and what I'm looking to do is I'm looking to come up forward, pop my feet very early in the game, very early, because the only thing I've lost at this point are Idrians. All the Bastions are still alive, they're still quite happy. But we're going to pop feet, bring the Idrians back, and we're going to have them assault and battery into the Gators. And the reason why this is very risky and the reason why it's very important that Carvolo went previously is that the Gators cost terror, and the Idrians are going to be taking their terror check here shortly in an effort to get in there, though. So, but with any luck, bringing them back and having do, them do that will completely turn the tide around. It will gum up the Gators. They won't be able to attack. They will now be contesting the flag. And then I'll have that Bastion there contesting the flag as well. And that'll completely reverse the way that flank is going for me here. And here we just have the Bastions. They're beating on the Sentry some more. Uh, he's not happy with it, but, you know, two turns of Bastions and a Reckoner. This thing's still not dead. It's going to be around next turn. We're going to debuff him down to Matt 1 again because it's entertaining. So activate High Reclaimer. He's going to go ahead. He's going to pop an Immolation out of Gatorman. Just, you know, get a little damage on them. Do a little bit extra. And he actually, I believe, kills one with it. And then he's going to go ahead and pop feet. And he's going to bring back the uh, Chieftain, and I believe he ruled the max for bringing them back, but they only had five dead. And this is the plan to basically swing the flank. Additionally, it does mean the two on the other end on um, my right flank are out of formation. Then finally, he's going to drop some cloud walls there. He's going to end up dropping them on the gators. Uh, this is mostly to debuff their mats. That way they're going to have some trouble hitting the Idrians, I hope. It will be defense 15 effectively against them. The downside to this is when you drop clouds on gators, they gain concealment. So when I start shooting on them, um, they're going to have issues. Fortunately, that's what Prey and CRA is for. So just proving that they're out of formation, they're not happy. And I'm handing him back his dice, which I've been stealing. So here they are, they're uh, taking their free strikes to walk back in. And they both died to the Taskmaster. And now we're giving out the Assault and Battery Order against the Prayed Gitterman Posse. And banging them up a little bit with a couple of CRAs before charging in. So 
So doing all of our charge moves. Trying to get it to where we can do a couple CMAs per gator as well, just to up that power a little bit. And then they take their terror check and I roll an 11. And they completely fail and it is just devastating. Okay, having the uh, <clears throat> having the Idrian's break was a good thing for me. Um, that means they weren't able to they weren't able to contest the, the flag, but I did have the one bash that advanced and did contest. After checking for flat fire, the one agonizer, uh, the one gray agonizer, ended up dying. Unfortunate, uh, but it does happen. Um, there was a bunch of weapon masters that came in and ended up killing off my bronze back. I was hoping to keep him for a while, but nothing lasts forever. So I, you know, had to do what I could do and took the fury. And now I'm stuck with uh, just a gladiator and a sentry for any kind of fury generation. And uh, really close to being able to uh, try and win this game on scenario. It, uh, <clears throat> it's been a real tough game uh, between his feet and the, those clouds. Those clouds are really devastating for an army that re relies on the ability to charge. An army that's, that's melee heavy, these clouds are really, really a, a pain. Uh, so I activate the Taskmaster and she does Pain Driver on the one unit of gators hoping hoping that they can uh, be able to do something they then the gators inactivate because of the idrians running they don't incur a free strike from moving in or out of their melee range so they end up uh, advancing forward because all i have to do is kill a single bastion to hopefully being able to score another point and get that one point closer to, to victory. Um, I am able to swing and hit and able to kill off the one Bastion and the other Gator is going to swing on the other one, which I hit, but no real damage. Um, but that's the, that's, the, that's the order of the dice. You know, sometimes you did good, sometimes they're not. Now the rest of the Gators are swinging on the Idrians. The rest of the Idrians in the unit to try and clear them out again. As you can tell right there, I'm measuring my eight inches of my control area, uh, mostly because I'm trying to figure out if there's any way my caster can run to an object to the flag and be able to score dominating points because right now I'm really close to winning and if I could if I could dominate that could mean that all the difference between you know winning or losing this game right here uh, unfortunately I am out by less than a quarter of an inch I activate the one agonizer uh, he does spiritual affliction uh, catching at least the reckoner because he's going to be my biggest pain. Um, now it's to activating my caster. He does, he heals the sentry. Because with all those weapon master attacks, uh, it uh, it needed some health. Um, I then go ahead and arc breath of corruption through the taskmaster, boosting it to hit because I need to, uh, targeting the one uh, choir member I hit and I'm able to kill off two choir and Tristan really a good thing for me uh, I then advanced sideways sitting on nothing because um, I needed to make sure that Tristan was dead because uh, I didn't want his jack to have be allocated any focus now the beast handlers activate they move forward uh, they heal the sentry for a couple points, and then they swing on. Then the others end up swinging on the uh, Idrians. And because of the fact that I have nothing next to the flag, I go ahead and run the gobbers over 
which turns out to be a mistake. I really needed to have the gobbers not run, but advance and put a uh, put a cloud effect up. But hindsight is twenty twenty, and you know there's nothing we could do about it after the fact. But it is something that I should have thought about waiting on. Now I've activated the sentry. He's done his ability to do all of his swings. Um, cast Locker to keep the Reckoner once again locked in with him and not being able to move. And then I now have to, I think all I have left on this is the Taskmaster and the Gladiator. The Gladiator decides to slam the Bastion. I uh, boost it to hit because I really want to hit this guy. I hit, it slams him into the Bastion behind him. They're both knocked down. Uh, because he slammed at the same size base, I get an additional damage die, which is enough to kill him. And my mistake was I thought I got to follow up, but I didn't. Because uh, the slam target ended up slamming zero inches. And I, wasn't, I didn't realize that uh, at the time that I couldn't make the follow up if they slammed zero. So I then had to put the model back. And, you know, go for, and then just rile. And at the end of my turn, I should end up scoring my th third point uh, with hopes that I can, uh, you know, get my fifth, fourth and fifth by, the, by my next turn. So the Adrians failed last turn their morale check, which was just backbreaking. And in retaliation, he killed a lot of models. You can see me counting up my focus and soul tokens over there. He killed so many models, I actually have two sets of the protector tokens, and I still ran out of soul tokens. And we've been in this situation before with our Claimer, if you've read the Chronicles a lot, if you have 30 focus, you sit there and you fling 30 emulations at it. So once again, there's an agonizer up there, I still can't allocate focus. He was able to kill off Tristan, so the Redeemer's inert. So fortunately we don't even have to bother with any of that, really. So what we have to deal with is very specific, really. I'd like the Reckoner to pop a shot into a Chef just to get his defense down a little bit. In order to do that, you have to kill the Sentry. And so we're just going to activate the Bastions, and we're just going to start smacking on him some more. Then if that doesn't work, we still have a Vassal to smack on him even more. And here you can see the Bastions, they're turning to face, and they are just chopping on this sentry yet again. And the reason why we have to kill the sentry is for line of sight purposes. I uh, need to get a higher claimer on the hill and do it. So the Vassal and the Reckoner finally take that guy out. I'm just so happy. So now we need to move the Reckoner out of the way so that the higher claimer can have somewhere to stand in order to get within range of a chef and then be on the hill in order to be able to see him. So again, we're shuffling some bastions around. We're just going to uh, kill off whatever. Uh, the good news is that the Gladiator, I believe, is actually full, so he won't be getting any transfers. So finally, uh, Carvola came up, he put Fearless on the Idrians, rallied them. They're moving out of the way, they're moving to attack some things, kill off a pain giver or two. They didn't really do particularly well in their attack rolls, so I don't think they really accomplished all that much. I might have killed one pain giver. Now the Reckoner is moving up. And it's very interesting because we all talk about how amazing Reach is until you're trying to not be engaged with your gun to make shots. And then all of a sudden Reach is not so good. So the Reckoner was never actually able to get unengaged anywhere in that little path. 
So he ended up just bopping a uh, pain giver on the head. And now we have High Reclaimer. He's going in for his assassination run. Her chef has no transfers. He's just flinging immolation after immolation at him and rolling a three to hit every single time. Did it three times in a row. It was ridiculous. But finally he's able to start landing some of those hits. He's able to start boosting some of that damage. And he is finally able to finish off for chef once and for all. 